JTN again presents you with a round one race two recap from the New Jersey Motor Speedway. We're going to get right into it. Here is the initial start. We're going to take you through the first couple laps here at New Jersey. Ryan Pace would win his first pole in a long time with Trey Coleman to his outside. Both guys that really only needed a solid finish tonight to make it on to the next round. You see Randall Coleman and Sean Whitehill, guys that needed really good finishes to make it to the next round behind them. The green flag's out. We're underway at New Jersey. And you're going to see Trey Coleman prevail. A really good race run set up under that one car, coupled with the fact that the 22 all night was complaining about handling issues on the bottom. We'll give Trey Coleman the lead here at the initial start as they're still side by side going into three and four. You see Brandon Hawkin, last week's winner, he started closer to the back of the field this evening. See, they're almost three wide there through three and four. As we continue, Sean Whitehill, a guy that needed a good race finish tonight after instants. Cam Barnes, Jeff Dixon. Uh, Dixon needed a solid finish tonight to make it on to the next round. You see Garrett Sidner, that top five last week, is going to really help him as we go throughout these recaps. Uh, help him get on to the next round. But you see, the story of the night is going to be this one car, Trey Coleman. Trey doing a great job of getting a setup under him that really works. And we'll see that play out throughout the night. Continuing to lead here at New Jersey early on in the race. Doing a great job. Ryan Pace holding down second place. It was really a race for second most of the night. That one car was on rails. You see Randall Coleman, a de facto teammate of Trey in that one car. And Brandon Hawkin, a guy that's always fast. And that Burrell ART Toyota Camry. As we see Trey lead another lap here, we'll take you to our next highlight. It's going to involve Mr. Coleman here on lap 30. Leaders are coming for green flag pit stops. It's going to be the 1 and the 22 coming to pit road. You see they're down there on the bottom signaling that they're coming to pit road. Cam Barnes making a move to the outside as they do so. We're going to watch Trey. And he's going to lock him up really hard coming to pit road and miss the entrance. Big penalty for him. That's a 30-second penalty hold on pit road. He's going to lose a lap because of that silly mistake. Looks really... Uh, strong car looks like it might be in doubt for getting a win. We, so we can move on to lap 61 for our first caution of the event. Car is running low on fumes. The 42 of Cam Barnes says he's coming to pit road this lap, but he's on the outside of Darren Ingram in that 24. Cam's going to clear him, though, and go to the bottom here. Put it in chat, but did not say it out loud, and that's going to prove costly. You see Brandon gets into the back of the 24, hard in the wall for Darren Ingram after having a tough race at Pocono. This is going to take him out of contention. You see Sean Whitehill, Cam Barnes, but we'll go on board with the 24 here next. You see down the back straightaway in this beautiful Exalta car, he has nowhere to go. Dixon's to the outside, a slower lap car that just came off pit road and just hard lick to the back of that 24 car and a really tough break for Darren Ingram, driver of the number 24. Had so much momentum going into the playoffs and this seals the deal that he will not be moving on. We look on board now with our Borel ART on board with Brandon Hawkins. He just has nowhere to go. Runs over the 24. The 42 made a really late commit to pit road. And you see the one of Trey Coleman. He goes by there, gets his lap back because of all of that. And that puts him back on the lead lap. So we move on to lap 72. Jeff Dixon, another guy that's battling on the bubble right now. He has a big moment going through the trial here. Really loose, but does a great job of saving the car. Uh, but then you're going to see he gets in the grass a little bit, throws the car up and down, gives it a little damage. We'll move on to lap 73. Next lap, fortunately for Dixon, this doesn't involve him, but unfortunately for all these guys, a yellow flag's not going to come out as we see Darren Ingram go and Corbin Huffman, teammates, going down to turn one. Darren's just going to get really loose on the transition into the banking here, and he takes out the 88. Gets, like I said, got so loose because of that transition. Tough break for those two, and no caution. Vast officials don't throw a yellow at this even though there were cars coming at full blast through that section of the track here you see tommy bordeaux who was right behind this incident you just see the 24 goes around takes out the 88 really puzzling why that did not bring out a caution on lap 73. we move on to our next caution it's gonna be on lap 89 again a chase dryer playoff driver having issues it's gonna be garrett sidner in the 16 and the motor is gonna let go for garrett spews oil all over the track officials put a yellow out for that but there you see the smoke Garrett makes it be due to that top five last week and a finish where he at least was ahead of guys, some of the guys behind him. But a tough break for the 16 team after getting so lucky last week at Pocono. We move on to lap 105. This coming up again. This is our run to the finish at this point. Guys are 
good on fuel, if not really close. You see Brandon Hawkins on the inside of Cam Barnes. Barnes falls in line behind him as they go into turns three and four. You're going to watch the 42. He's going to hit, make contact with the 99. He goes around. Hard lick for the 42. You see him up and on his roof. We're going to see another camera angle of this. You're going to see the 42 just runs over the 99. Looks like the 9. I don't know if the 99 lifted, but the 42 definitely did not over on his roof. You're going to see here coming off of turns one and or coming off of turn two. 42 is going to have a really good run down the back stretch. And he's, instead of trying to use the run to the get to the inside, he gets half a car length, but the nose on that Camaro just runs over the 99, making contact, ending both their nights. You see uh, off the back end of the 99, Brandon Hawkins. And you're just see this 42. It's just going to all of a sudden, the 42 is going to be right in his bumper. And it sends them both around. Brandon would have enough da would have a lot of damage, but it, by virtue of the win last week, he moves on. We go to lap 110, our final restart of the event here it's gonna be trey coleman and ryan pace on the front row reversed what lanes they were in but it's gonna be a big issue for ryan pace this lap had it sta stayed out of trouble the whole race you see his teammates underneath him here not making it three wide doing a good job giving each other room coming down the back stretch here though this is where the wall is gonna bite this 22 he goes really high into the corner and makes contact He's going to lose all his track position, lose a bunch of spots, and not will not be able to regain most of them. Tough break for the 22 team. You see more battling between the 2 and 12. As we're going to move on next to our final lap, here we're going to see Trey Coleman. He's going to do, again, so much adversity, and we talked to him about that after the race, but coming, getting the white flag here. He's just smooth sailing for this one car. No one out in front. He's going to do a great job of making sure he gets to the end here. Randall Coleman, nowhere close to make a pass for the lead. No relation there as well between the two Colemans. Trey gets to the inside of his good friend, Darren. Goes through three and four. It's going to smooth sail on that outside line. Keep his momentum going. Coming off of turn four, and Trey Coleman will win his second race. First race in the playoffs here at New Jersey. Great run for that one team. New Sporting a new paint scheme this week. And there you see, we're going to see Trey burning it down as we get ready to go to our driver interviews here for our podium finishers. Here live after the race, or at least a live interview, I'm sitting here with winner of tonight's fantastic race at New Jersey, Mr. Trey Coleman, pilot of the number one Monster Energy Camaro for DCR. Trey, congratulations on your win. Um, it's got to feel really good to get win number two under your belt, and especially at such a different track than where win number one came this season. Thank you so much, Joe. I really appreciate it. Um, the number one Monster Energy Camaro for DCR, um, it was on rails today, and I know everyone says that when they're at a, um, a speedway like this, but man, when I was able to get out there in the front, um, I don't really think anyone was able to get back up my bumper i think 22 ryan pace and obviously randall coleman there were really 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 fast um and a lot of the guys were fast um early in that first run i knew i was leading and i didn't want to lead um i knew i was burning a little bit more fuel up there and i knew i hadn't practiced too much with pit road entry uh we got that first first one of stops there and i think you saw it yourself but i, I missed uh the commitment code so yeah, i drive right around that got me a 30 second penalty there uh relegated me to a little bit lap down but we got a a later caution and it really got me back in the lead lap and set me towards the uh, front front of the field back again. well and that was going to be my question or my follow-up question at least you had adversity tonight you talked about that car how the car felt good up front you know you guys did a great job on the setup all you dcr rev guys were towards the front of the pack there throughout the race until some cautions and whatnot happened and chips didn't fall in your guys's odds as a team they did for you in the one car talk about you know the the anger and frustration, you know, making a silly mistake like that, missing the uh, commitment line for pit road, but then the, I'm assuming, joy after a caution comes out, you manage to get back on the lead lap, passing the leaders as the caution was coming out, and then getting your lap back that way, and then obviously going on to win. Oh, man, it, it's my uh, heart. My heart sunk as soon as I realized I'd missed the commitment code. I'm like, I don't know how long my penalty is going to be here, but I figured it was going to be something, so I just uh, stuck it out. I really wanted to get back up to that pack and pass the leaders, and of course, I didn't even have to take the lucky dog. I was able to get by him uh, when that yellow came out, so I really lucked out there. You, should, you, you say luck, but it 
it's shown all season. This has been your best season to date statistically. You had the win at Daytona. You got this win. You finished second last week at Pocono. What do you guys got to do in two weeks when we head to Road America um, to keep this momentum going so that and carry it through, hopefully all the way to the championship finale? Well, just be patient. Um, obviously, I can't make a mistake like, it, like that again because I'm not really – I'm going to be able to recover from a penalty like that at a place like Road America. I'm going to lose 10 to 15 seconds on something like that and maybe a pit stop I miss pit road or maybe even hit the barrels. Um, so really making sure that I don't make the same mistakes I did before um, and just being patient. Being patient um, is really going to help you get through the chase here. And before we let you go, anyone you want to thank? I know you thanked a lot of guys last week, a lot of guys and gals and all the people back at the shop and your sponsors, but go for it again, Trey. All right. Well, I want to thank uh, my mom and dad for letting me race, of course, uh, not giving me any yard work to do while we're racing. Of course, it's nighttime out here. <laughs> uh, Monster Energy Craftsman, uh, the whole DCR team, Demario Chambers for obviously um, putting this organization together, as well as Randall Coleman. Um, I'd like to thank my teammates this season, obviously Darren Ingram, Jeff Dixon, and Cam Barnes as well. I know they really didn't have the luck they wanted to today, but I felt like it was a great run for Rev Affiliated as well. Um, and Black Lives Matter movement, of course, supporting those faced with racial injustice. I hope that uh, me running this car with those details on it this season can really serve as a uh, statement. Obviously not to us, since we're all pretty cognizant here, but to the sim racing community and the world as a whole. Yeah, and I hope so too, Trey, because you do it. And you, it's a great you. You got a great cause going, and you do it so well. And you make sure that people are aware, and you make sure you have those tough conversations when you need to. This was Trey Coleman, driver of the number one Monster Energy Craftsman Chevy Camaro ZL1 LE for DCR tonight. Again, Trey, congratulations on win number two for the season. Thank you so much. See you in two weeks. Live here, post-race interview. I'm Joe Twansky. Of course, you just heard me interview Mr. Trey Coleman. And now we're moving on to a different Coleman. No relation, of course. Randall Coleman, driver of the number nine. It was the Switch. Chevy Camaro ZL1 LE for Revolution Motorsports, the team he owns. Randall, congratulations on a strong run tonight, that second-place finish. Uh, it has to feel good after what happened last week at Pocono. Yeah, absolutely. After Pocono, you know, we were kind of down there at the bottom, and we needed a really strong run tonight at New Jersey and it's one of our better tracks and uh we got a little bit of extra testing in and it looked like it off you know finished second um I think we had the speed to go out there and compete for that win there but uh just not enough laps and you talk about having the speed to compete for the win we saw all of the rev DCR that alliance those alliance cars running up towards the front running together um trying to get that win what when you're you know, you're the leader of that organization as a whole, leader of Rev, and then leader of that coalition between the two teams. What does it mean when you see all your drivers running up front, running competitively, and then for a bunch of unfortunate accidents happening to really screw over, I don't want to say screw over, but ruin the chances of some of the guys to move on? Yeah, you know, we we put a lot of work into it this week, especially trying to uh, to help Darren. You know, he, he was on the outside looking in. Um so we went, we went to work. We did our homework. Like I said, New Jersey is usually a strong track for us. Um, so we put our heads together. Uh, a pretty good setup combo. Um, we discussed it amongst each other and, and with the DCR as well. And uh, it, it paid off. You know, we, we were up there running up front. Majority of the race, you know, we had most of the, all the cars up there at one time, you know, um, and then, unfortunately, some bad luck happened up in the front with, like, Cam and, and Darren, and that ruined his chance of making the chase, um, you know. Um, and then Jeff having a good, solid run, and then I don't know what happened to him. I know Corbin got involved in a wreck. Um, but, you know, we've we've battled so far this season, um, and we've I think we're finally getting headed in the right direction to show what we got the – next couple rounds with the guys we have left in it and you know we're mo you're moving on obviously to the next round of the playoffs after the great run tonight and a solid at least a solid finish last week if that race you know didn't go the way obviously everyone saw how the end it ended for a lot of guys but talk about i guess before we get you out of here talk about how this next round, it's a, it's a really unique challenge for your guys. You have Road America and Talladega. What do you guys got to do the next round to kind of make sure you keep as many cars in the 
to the round of eight as you can? Uh, it's pretty simple. We just had to go out there and execute, and uh, especially with Road America, you know, uh, it's a road course. It's it's one of the bigger road courses that we run. Um, the the main goal for there is just you know keep your car clean, keep it on the track, um, overdrive the turns, and try to get the best finish you can and and survive you know day up in the point and then head into talladega and you know as you know as well with uh having teammates you know it goes a long way at talladega to work together and work your way up to the front or, or self in position to one stay out of trouble and to compete for a shot at the win if not just to survive to make it to the next round and before we let you go anyone you want to thank here Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank Chevy and Switch for being on board tonight. Um, Napa, they're going to be on the card next week. Or actually, in two weeks, we got a week off. So in two weeks, we're going to have Napa back on the car. We're going to have Hooters on the rear before the end of the season's over. Um, they've been on board with us. Those three main sponsors have been with us all season long. Um, you know, I want to give a shout-out to my boy, Zach. He, unfortunately, didn't make the chase tonight. He was sick. Um, hope he feels better. Hope he gets back on the track next week or two weeks from now with us. Um, give a shout out to Trey. You know, uh, he's come a long ways, you know, working with him, working up through the ranks. You know, he came out and executed and got the win. So got to give him props, you know, from one Coleman to the other. Yeah, and Randall, thank you so much for joining us, taking the time to give an interview. Now go celebrate that second place finish and good luck in two weeks at Road America. Thank you. That was Randall Coleman, driver of the number nine switch Chevy Camaro ZL1 LE for Revolution Motorsports. We'll move on to our next interview. And finally, here in the booth, live after the race, we are joined by third place finisher's best finish of the season, driver of the number 21 Motorcraft Ford Motorcraft, Quick Lane, Ford Mustang for Team Tawanski, Mr. Michael Murata. Welcome to the booth, Mikey. Congratulations on the podium finish. Yeah, thank you. That was uh, definitely a long time coming, I think, this season. <laughs> well, talk about it. You, you've had a lot of close calls. You ran really good at Indy, ended up getting a top five there. You had a bunch of sixth place finishes we were talking about in team meetings throughout the week. Just you got to go out, just do what you've been doing all season and you're going to advance on to the next round. You're on the outside looking in coming into this race. What's the relief level for you behind the wheel that number 21? It's quite a bit. Um, I'm no road course expert, but everyone's got a shot at Talladega. So that's, you know, going to really help. As, uh... Sorry. <laughs> you're good. Well, kind of out of loss for words. I'm just, I'm just like, <laughs> still like exhausted. <laughs> well, but, and... um, yeah, I think it really helps having Caledonia as that last race just to give everyone a shot at moving on to round three. But I'm, you know, should have won there, so still got that on my mind. <laughs> and then he's talking about last season, I believe, right? At a yeah, I think hit... so. Maybe two there seasons. There was a couple ago, seasons ago honestly. when there used to be a hot pitting role. I think we talked about that uh, last yeah. night. Or... It would have been Tuesday night. I think this video, we're going to be coming out Thursday. We'll see. But, um, again, so you, you're already looking at Talladega, but Road America comes before Talladega, if I do recall the schedule correctly. What yeah. do you got to do between now and two weeks from now at Road America to get that 21 team all tuned up to make a, get a good finish, at least at Road America, where you can feel a little more comfortable going into Talladega? Honestly, I just think I make something that's you know not really all over the place just relatively stable and i mean just kind of run my race as i've been doing all season and hopefully that'll uh be at least good enough to put me in a good spot for if, if things go wrong at talladega that maybe it can make it into round three well, and Mikey, you got to have more confidence in yourself bud you had, <laughs> you've had stellar finishes all year and this is what we keep trying to tell you you know you had, what, four sixth-place finishes, a top five before that, so make all those sixth place fifth places, because I'm sure Brandon was in most of those races anyways. And, I mean, 
it's been a really good season for you consistency wise. What do you do behind the wheel? Um, because we again we talk we talk about with a lot of guys about you know oh it was just we had a really good car this week or it was something along those lines. But you've had really good speed everywhere this week. It's just in a little at least recent history you've been able to put these races together a little better, especially this season. What has been the change? Um, behind the controller, I guess, because I, I know you're racing on <laughs> controller in here. Yeah. Don't want to, don't want to sell you short because that's a tremendous skill on its own. But what it, what do you have to do? What it, what it change behind the controller for this season? I think, um, well, no pun intended, but setting the setups to where I can control them and it's not <laughs> too loose. And honestly, like it's kind of weird, especially in like practice. You have all that time in practice and happy hour, and I still just kind of couldn't really get that together in the past couple seasons, and then kind of led to a lot of you know spins, DNFs, whatnot, and I think now it's just, as long as I can get it to where I can run it, I think it's giving me a lot better chance. Yeah. Not have to, you know, hold on for dear life. And before we let you go, we give everyone a chance to thank people, to thank their sponsors, whoever it may be. Who you got to thank, Mikey? Yeah, I'll say my sponsors, Ford Motorcraft, Quick Lane, um, my team, Joe Tawanski, Ryan Pace, and Sean Whitehill, and uh, I guess that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we look forward to seeing you at Road America with a round of 12 sticker on the car, and again, congratulations on the podium finish, the first podium finish for the year. Keep up that momentum, Mikey. We're so, as a the you know owner of Team Tawanski, I'm so proud of you so far. You've done such a great job this year of kind of reining it in a little bit, getting more consistent, and that consistency is going to carry you around throughout the rest of these playoffs if you can just keep it up, buddy. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. And that is Mr. Michael Murata, driver of the number 21 Ford Motorcraft Quick Lane Ford Mustang for Team Twansky. Thanks, Joe, for conducting all those interviews. We're now going to go on to our playoff grids. We decided... Who is going to move on to the round of 12? You see Brandon Hawken with plus 18. That's almost a whole race here in the Fast Racing League. He's going to be with a great advantage going into the round. Trey Coleman picks up two more bonus points. And Ryan Pace with his four from the fr that he already had going into the first round. You see Randall Coleman, Tommy Bordeaux, Sean Whitehill, Corbin Huffman, Mikey Murata, John Foreman, Garrett Sidner, myself, and Cam Barnes all making it to the next round of the playoffs where we'll be at Road America in two weeks. Unfortunately, Colby Martin and Zach Krastowski both did not make the race, so they were eliminated by virtue of that, as well as a tough two weeks for the 24 team of Darren Ingram and Jeff Dixon having another tough race as well. They came into the round with two bonus points. Dixon misses it by one point to bet. Cam Barnes beats Jeff Dixon by one point to make it on to the round of 12 be interesting to see how those dynamics in the DCR shop play out over the next two races. Well, the next five races, with all that being said. But you see a lot of great runs. You see John Foreman making it on to the round of 12. Sean Whitehill, after being way back throughout the season, makes it on to the round of 12 as well. So be an interesting round with two very unique tracks, and we can't wait to bring you these recap videos for those as well. With all that being said, I'd like to thank everyone for watching, taking the time. Like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next Tuesday at New Hampshire for the Dash Series.